In this video, we're going to talk about you know one of the most um, interesting but also confusing uh, point, which is about the unemployment okay, or unemployment rate. How could the unemployment rate be so misleading from time to time? Now, here I want to start with a real world example, which happened in the summer of 2009, as you can see here. Uh, I'm pulling out this web page, uh, which says that President Obama um, made a speech back then in front of the nation. He said that the worst may be behind us on economy. Okay, and um, he made the speech in um, uh, August the seventh, okay, 2009, and um, he actually had the evidence. Um, which is from the Labor Department, and it's about unemployment here. Uh, let me highlight this part. And um, the Labor Department reported earlier um, that week, uh, before his uh, speech, uh, which showed that the unemployment rate for July declined to 9.4% from 9.5% in June, the previous month. Okay. Um, but right after President Obama made that speech, um, it becomes very controversial among the professional economists. Most of us disagreed with him. We didn't believe a dip in unemployment rate in the middle of a recession or a crisis is a good sign. Okay, so um, again, the common sense is the unemployment rate becomes lower, so the labor market should have done better. But again, that's not the truth. Now, to be able to demonstrate that, let me switch back to our slides. And uh, we're going to um, use a very simple hypothetical example to show you why okay, or how it could be misleading. Okay, Now, in this uh, um, example, uh, we will create a table here, okay? And the first column is number of people employed. Uh, the second column would be unemployed. The third column would be number of people not in the labor force. And the very last column on your right hand side is the unemployment rate, okay? Now we're going to um, create a three stages, okay, to show you um, the evolution of the unemployment rate okay the first stage uh, we call it pre-recession in other words this is a normal situation okay uh, when the economy is doing well all right we find that um, again with the hypothetical numbers um, we believe this way we can minimize our math workload okay so you don't have to spend much time doing the math uh, you can definitely um, Go and find the realistic numbers. I believe on the problem set, um, there was there's one question uh, asking you to go to the BOS website and find the exact numbers reported by the government. Okay, but again, these numbers are going to be pretty big, and the the math would be uh, more time consuming. Okay, not hard, but time consuming. Now here, that's why we created these uh, simple numbers here. Uh, Two hundred people employed in stage one. 10 unemployed, but they're still looking for one. Okay, 30 not in the labor force, so you can easily uh, figure out the unemployment rate for stage one, right? Which is 10 over 10 plus 200 uh, times 100 percent, so you get 4.8 percent. So you can take that as a benchmark. Okay, when the economy is doing well, uh, the unemployment rate is 4.8 percent. Now, stage two here is the beginning of recession. In other words, when things start going not so good. Okay. Now, we find here number of employed decreases by 10, right, from 200 to 190. That means 10 people are laid off uh, in stage two. Okay. And that's why here number of unemployed increases from 10 to 20. Right, and um, the number of people not in the labor force stays the same, thirty. 
So we can recalculate the unemployment rate. It's going to be 20 over 20 plus 190. Okay? So we will get 9.5%. So here we find that unemployment rate shoots up okay, from stage 1 to stage 2. Again, that's simply because of the recession. Okay? It makes sense because the economy is doing worse now right uh, the firms are cutting back their production they're laying off people so unemployment rate should go up what's most confusing but interesting is a third stage okay third stage we're trying to mimic uh, a deep recession in other words the economy is not yet recovering okay so it's still you know um in a way hitting the bottom of this Okay, so it's a deep recession when, um, or we can take this as a worst case scenario. Okay, uh, we keep number of people employed the same, but you know if you would like to think you know this is a the worst worst uh, scenario, so you want to try a lower number like 185, 180. That's fine. Okay, that's not going to change our conclusion. But to simplify this, so I just keep the number the same. Okay, this number. Now we find that number of unemployed decreased from 20 to 18, and number of people not in the labor force increased from 30 to 32. In other words, here, what exactly happens in the real world is two people quit looking for jobs. Okay? Why they quit? Because what, when they just been laid off, they would probably go back to the labor market in trying to, you know, send out their resumes, their uh, job application packets, and um, applied for many uh, positions. Um, and then they're going to wait till the HR called them, right? Uh, day after day, week after week, they eventually realize that there's no job out there for them. Okay, they didn't get any phone call from uh, the positions they applied. Um, not to mention any campus or, or on-site um, visit. Okay, so they believe that if they keep doing this, it's gonna, just going to be a waste of their time. Okay, so they quit. They stop looking for jobs. Now remember how we define unemployment. Once you stop looking for jobs. The government will automatically put you into the group of not in the labor force. Okay, so that's why you know this guy, uh, this guy increases by two. Okay, now if we calculate the unemployment rate, which is 18 divided by 18 uh, plus 190, you would find here comes the magic thing: the unemployment rate decreases from stage two to stage three okay it used to be 9.5 percent in stage two now it becomes 8.7 percent so it decreases by a tenth percentage points right does this mean the economy becomes better in stage three no no it means the opposite the economy did even worse in stage number three. Okay, here you can recall what we just checked out. You know about President Obama's speech. Why many professional economists disagree with him? Okay, uh, when we find that the unemployment rate dipped uh, in the summer of 2009, we should use extreme caution when we're trying to say the economy is doing better. Okay. It's not, at least, you know, in this uh, hypothetical example, it's not, okay? It, it simply means the economy is actually doing worse. It's it, it, the, the um, labor market or the job market is so bad that people already lose their help. Okay? They already stop looking for jobs. Now, for this group of uh, people, it's called discouraged workers, okay? We call them discouraged workers. Now, the number of discouraged workers here would be two. Okay. All right. And um, 
again on the uh, worksheet and post on Moodle, you would find um, a, a different example I gave you so that you can have some uh, hands-on uh, experience here. Okay, and um, other than creating the numbers, you also need to uh, explain the numbers you created, make sense of them. Okay. Now, for example, here, um, from stage one to stage two, your discussion should focus on this one, okay, number of employed and number of unemployed. Okay, why this number decreases, why this guy increases. Okay, simply because of the, um, as we said before, you know, um, some people are laid off. Okay. Now, from stage two to stage three, your discussion should focus on this one and this one. Okay. Saying that, you know, two people left the labor force and um, that's why um, the unemployment rate dips. Okay. But simply because of the, uh, the movement of the discouraged workers. All right. Now, um, here, I also want to uh, leave you guys for an assignment, uh, okay? And you can look at the trends and fluctuation of the unemployment, unemployment rate, okay? So here we're looking at from the post-World War II all the way to the recent years, okay? You can find that there's a lot of ups and downs, ups and downs, along with the uh, e economic fluctuations, okay? But I do want to drive your attention to a very specific um, a comparison. Okay, if you compare the peaks of the unemployment rate, for example, here, okay, in early uh, 2000, here, and here, and you also look at these shaded areas. As we said before in the Fred chart, um, the shaded areas represent recessions, right? And we find that here, the peaks of unemployment rate always occur after the end of the recession. In other words, the shaded areas do not cover the peaks of the unemployment rate. This is this is counterintuitive, okay? Because when we, you know, the, for the shaded area, we said uh, before that um, they were defined by NBER, National Bureau of Labor Statistics, which is a research institution. Okay? It's, it, it is not affiliated with any government uh, or government agencies. Okay? So uh, when they define the recession, why don't they extend the shaded area to be able to cover the peaks of unemployment? Right? Because if you know, our common sense would say when the unemployment rate keeps climbing up, the economy is doing worse. The labor market is doing worse. So the economy should still be in that recession, right? But the MBR, MBR disagrees. They believe the recession ends before the unemployment rate peaks. Okay. Now, um, for this one here in uh, mid 1980s and this one in late 1970s, you may think you know um, they're pretty close. But again, that's because we show you a very long period of time. If you you know kind of enlarge that part and, and focus on that period, you would find that the peaks um, also occurred after the end of the recession. Okay. Again, I'm going to leave this for you guys as an assignment. You create a, a, a table like what you saw in the previous slide. You create, it, um, you create a, a three-stage numerical example to um, mimic the situation we just discussed. Okay? Like why, um, and then I'm trying to um, show us why the peaks of unemployment rate occurs after the recession end. Okay, trying to make sense of that. Now, during our virtual meeting online, we're gonna talk about this. Okay, I can probably give you um, more clues about how to do this. But again, give it a try on your own.